Hi everyone, welcome to Corn Snake Corral for Thursday, December 1st, 2022. I am Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary and I am joined this evening by Talon. He is my Hart County, Kentucky locality corn snake. He was hatched in 2017 and I got him from Ryan Dumas at Rad Reptiles. You might notice that he's a wild type coloration, but he's really dark. His oranges are really dark brownish. They're very rich, and that was one of the things that attracted me to him when I saw that he was available. And then look at this. Look at all of his ventral scales, his underbelly. His ventral scales really from top to bottom are this Indian corn or checkerboard pattern, which I think is so cool. The reason he's with me tonight is because for Corn Snake Corral this week, I'm gonna briefly highlight a paper for you that is specifically about research done on two localities of corn snakes in Kentucky, one in Edmondson County and one in Hart County, Kentucky. And that is the area where Talon is from. Talon's name is T-A apostrophe L-O-N, and it is a character from the science fiction television series, Babylon 5. Welcome to this locality spotlight on two populations of corn snake, Pantherophis scutatus, located in Hart County, Kentucky in the United States. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary, and I'm going to briefly go over the highlights from a paper specifically written about this corn snake locality. The paper that we're going to go over is the natural history and meristics of an allopatric population of red corn snakes, Pantherophis guttatus, in central Kentucky. It was published in 2015 in the Journal of North American Herpetology. The authors are Bird, Peak, and Baxley. Some vocabulary that might be helpful for you to understand as we go through the paper are the following words. Allopatric, these are populations of the same species that become geographically separated from each other, and it minimizes or completely prevents gene flow between the populations. Gravid is a female animal that is carrying eggs or carrying young. In other words, they're pregnant. A meristic is something that is countable. It's a countable trait or characteristic within a species. It's commonly used in ichthyology with fish and in herpetology with reptiles. So for example, scale counts in herpetology are an example of meristics. And then the nape is the back of the neck. I thought I'd point that out because we are gonna talk about some body parts and that's not one that you commonly hear. Here are some terms that reference body areas and I surprisingly could not find a diagram like this of a snake. I found horses, dogs, cats. I even found a kangaroo, but I didn't find a snake. I just want you to understand that dorsal means the back, ventral means the stomach or abdomen, caudal means towards the tail, and cranial means towards the head. I want to go over some background about Pantherophis guttatus, or the red corn snake in general, before we get into this specific paper. It was first described by Linnaeus in 1766, and it occurs throughout the southeastern United States from Florida west to eastern Louisiana, northward to Tennessee and North Carolina, and in more isolated populations in Kentucky and as far north as southern New Jersey. This statement is cited in this paper that we're gonna go over, but it's actually from another paper by Conant and Collins that was published in 1998. The article we're going over specifically today provides a visual of this and it's titled Figure One. We're gonna look at that on the next slide. This map is Figure One from the research paper that we're discussing. If you look at the upper left corner of this graphic, I've written in orange KY for Kentucky and I've drawn a arrow in orange to the state of Kentucky on this small map of the southeastern United States. All of those areas in purple are areas where corn snakes are found. The specific study area for this paper is one of those two purple areas in the state of Kentucky. The state of Kentucky is the state with the heavy black outline in this smaller map. And that purple area to the left that I've circled in orange is the study area. I've drawn an orange line down to this bigger map that is the entire state of Kentucky. I have highlighted the two counties that were the subject of researchers for this paper. It's got an E for Edmondson and an H for Hart County. So this is Edmondson and Hart County, Kentucky. 
in that highlighted circle, sort of right in the middle of the state of Kentucky. And that is where researchers studied these two allopatric populations of corn snakes in this specific paper. Pantherophis guttatus was first described as a species in 1766. And then there are two isolated populations in Kentucky that weren't actually discovered for over 170 years after those first corn snakes were described. So in, in 1936, an author named Hibbard, and in 1949, an author named Chinawith described these two different populations of corn snakes in Kentucky. According to the authors of this paper, Pantherophis guttatus in Kentucky make up two allopatric populations that are about 225 kilometers apart. That's about 140 miles. Now remember, allopatric populations mean it's two separate populations of the same species, but they are geographically separated and they more or less don't mix. The study area was a mixture of deciduous forest, pasture, haylands, and cultivated crops. And they did mention in the paper that these specific counties are pretty much sparsely populated by humans and there's not a lot of human development in the areas. Field observations of the red corn snake, Pantherophis guttatus in Kentucky. This is directly from the paper. In 2003 and 2004, researchers conducting field surveys in Edmondson and Hart counties, Kentucky, collected 101 corn snakes. Now, if you remember back to that map, those were the two counties in Kentucky that were shown with an E and an H on them. Researchers looked at activity patterns of these populations of corn snakes, reproductive activity and meristics. Now, remember that meristics are things that are countable. And in this case, they counted a bunch of scales on these snakes and found some interesting differences. I pulled out some activity pattern highlights for you from the paper. If you want more details, I encourage you to read the paper yourself. No snakes were observed by the researchers in December, January, and February, and the most snakes were sighted in May. And that's of both years that they did the study, both 2003 and 2004. And this is when the average temperature was between 18 and 21 degrees or 64 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The overall peak activity that authors observed these snakes was in April and May, and then in August and September. It appears that precipitation provides a stimulus for Pantherophis guttatus to leave sheltered areas and actively crawl on the surface. This is discussed in the paper. Some highlights that I pulled out of the reproductive section of the paper are that the authors observed at least one pair apparently mating underneath some natural cover, Researchers field collected three gravid females from Hart County who produced eggs in June. And then during the end of June, these eggs hatched out. They also bred two wild collected females under captive management and all of those eggs hatched out. The clutch sizes were anywhere from nine to 14 eggs with 100% hatch rates. And the egg incubation time was between 68 and 78 days. I'm going to go over some meristics that they looked at specifically with these two populations of corn snakes. This is really the best photo that I could find of anything that showed the ventral scales and the subcaudal scales and some of these different scale types that they're talking about here that they looked at. Researchers measured mid-body scale rows, dorsal body blotches, and blotches are these patches of color on the snake's general overall body color. Nape scale rows, those are the scale rows at the back of the neck. The vent scale rows, so those are going to be the ones around that cloacal opening. Ventral scale counts, those are any scale counts on the underside of the body, the abdominal side. And then subcaudal scale counts are going to be those underneath the tail. And caudal blotches are going to be any blotches of color on the snake's tail area. So some appearance highlights that I pulled out of the paper that I thought were interesting are that of the more than 100 individuals observed, only three or about 3% did not have the classic spear point marking on the head. And if you look at the snake in this picture, this is my Hart County, Kentucky locality corn snake Talon. And he is actually the corn snake pictured throughout this slide presentation. He came from rad reptiles, Ryan Dumas, and he was hatched in 2017. But you see this spear point marking on his head. 
So in the just over 100 animals these authors studied, they said only three did not have that pattern on the head. They discovered that female snakes have significantly more ventral scales than males. Those are going to be on the underside of the body. And that male snakes had more subcaudal scales than females. Those are going to be the ones that are underneath the tail or the back end of the snake. And it was significant enough that they published it in the paper as a type of sexual dimorphism. If you would like to learn details about any of these things that I highlighted, I suggest that you read the paper firsthand. You can find it and it is open access online in the Journal of North American Herpetology. I'll provide the link and the citation in the YouTube description. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you not only enjoyed that, but that you found it educational and you learned something about this specific locality of corn snake. I just highlighted some things that I pulled out of the paper. If you really want to know the details of what the researchers found about this population of corn snakes, I really recommend that you look at the paper yourself. It is freely available for anyone to read online and you're also able to download the PDF. Now, as a reward for Talon for helping me out and being a good sport during the intro and the outro of this video, I have a foraging exercise set up for him. It is in one of my smaller exercise bins, but I thought it would be easy to film in this versus a huge exercise bin or a huge exercise tent that I often put the corn snakes in. I don't let the corn snakes free roam because they're just too fast and small and I'm worried about losing them. So when they're out, they're either with me, they're on an activity stand that I am standing right next to, or they are in an exercise bin or tent. You ready? So thank you. Okay, I have four food items set up in here for him. He has a reptilink, two hopper mice, and two fuzzy mice. So obviously I can't do math. It's a good thing that I'm in behavior science and not some field of mathematics because that is not indeed four food items, but five. So I'm gonna put him in here and see if he finds them. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.